Eugene Toombs is about to be set free from the psychiatric hospital. He needs one more victim to complete his cycle. Toombs has the strange ability to contort his body and slither through any vent or pipe to enter his victim's home. Can the X-Files convince the authorities that he's a dangerous mutant creature? Or will he fool everyone long enough to satiate his carnivorous urges and continue his endless killing spree? Let's find out. Eugene Victor Toombs has been incarcerated in a mental institution for the last year for attacking FBI agent Scully in her home. But he has done much more. He attempts to wriggle and stretch his arm through a slit to unlock the door of his cell at the Baltimore Sanitarium. He just about reaches the latch when his psychologist, Dr. Monty, is heard whistling down the corridor. Monty knocks on the door, then enters as Toombs pretends to have been sleeping. The psychologist tells Toombs that the doctors will give testimony at his hearing, stating it is time for him to be released. I mean, why would they want to keep a sweet boy like him locked up anyway? The next day, Scully meets her new boss, Assistant Director Skinner. He is disappointed with her reports because she was assigned to debunk Mulder's explanations of the cases in the X-Files, but she tends to agree on his findings. She tries to support her point by saying the strange things they investigate go beyond the realm of scientific understanding. Skinner says maybe her mind has become too open and she needs to follow standard FBI protocols. Scully says conventional approaches to their cases will decrease the rate of success. Hmm, he's really throwing the book at her. If she redacts all the references to aliens, monsters, or mutants, her report would be about 10 words long. The court hearing for Toombs' psychological competence is taking place. Mulder and expert witnesses are there. One of his doctors says she performed a multitude of diagnostic tests and all turned out negative for physiological abnormalities. Another psychiatrist testifies that the loss of his job in animal control due to the false arrest by the FBI instigated his attack on Scully when he misdirected his frustrations. Dr. Monty reads the transcripts from his interview with Toombs, and it states he loves helping people and animals at his job. The doctor goes on to say how Toombs has learned to articulate his feelings. The repetitive pounding of Monty's pen triggers Toombs to get angry, and his eyes begin to change, but he snaps out of it as Monty states Toombs is no threat to society. Now it's Mulder's turn to testify. He says Toombs has been murdering five people every 30 years since 1903. Scully enters as Mulder is advised to proceed with caution during his testimony. He shows the pictures of Toombs' alleged victims over the last 90 years. He shows objects stolen from the victims found at Toombs' secret cave under a demolished building. Mulder senses the courtroom on the verge of laughter, so he throws in some science. He claims the defendant has a genetic mutation causing bone and muscular abnormalities allowing him to gain entrance into homes via pipes and window cracks. Scully can see Mulder is hitting a home run here with all his freaky evidence. Mulder shows elongated fingerprints matching Toombs's found at half the crime scenes. Everyone thinks Mulder is crazy and asks him to step down. Then he spews more evidence that he will kill again at the courtroom, but it only makes him look even more ridiculous. Toombs is released into the custody of an older couple whom he will live with as he integrates back into society. They tell him their guest room is small, but they are sure he will be able to squeeze in. He smiles at Mulder as he passes. Mulder says he'll keep him under surveillance knowing he'll kill soon because he just needs one more victim to complete his cycle. He tells Scully to look back on the murders from 30 and 60 years ago, seeing if they can tie Toombs to the crimes. Toombs is back on the job picking up roadkill. He spots a potential victim and begins to follow her. Mulder is right there asking him to help find his fake dog, a Norwegian Elkham named Heinrich, used to hunt moose. Toombs angrily drives off. Scully goes to visit Briggs, the police officer who worked the murders Toombs was a suspect in 60 and 30 years ago. 
She asks if there's one thing that may be able to tie Toombs to any of the victims. Briggs says that one body was never recovered in 1933 at the chemical plant where the crime took place. Briggs thinks the body was poured with the cement after they renovated it. They use a penetrating radar to look for anomalies in the consistency of the cement matrix. Briggs notices something odd over a spot and tells them the body must be underneath, so they dig right there. Meanwhile, Toombs is bagging some cat ash trophies when he smells a juicy thing encased in a blue trench coat. He now has his mark on his final victim and makes plans to get him. At the plant, Scully finds a human skeleton embedded in the concrete. The man marked for the live liverectomy arrives home and Toons has followed, but so has Mulder. The man is graph gazing on his computer when his wife asks if he wants to join her in bed. He takes one look at her hospital gown outfit and says no. Mulder checks to see why Toombs is waiting in the van and cannot find him, for he has slipped down the manhole cover into the sewer system beneath. The wife is getting ready for bed and notices the toilet clog with bubbles coming up. Here's Toombsy. She uses a snake to break through the debris when something starts pulling on it. Although it would have been cool to see him squeeze through the toilet, the lady closes and locks the lid, so now he can't get through. Is it a child-proof thing? At the same time, Mulder is searching around the house for any sign Toombs may be creeping around. Toombs finds another way to get in, the broken window dam. There are bars on it, but he play his face and body and squeezes through. He gets in and is spying from the shadows at the unsuspecting husband, getting ready to pounce. Mulder notices the opened window with muddy finger marks and pounds on their door. He says he's with the FBI and suspects a home invasion. They look around, but Toombs is gone. They have taken the samples from the cement to the forensic anthropology lab and learn it was from the early 1930s based on the pennies found around it. The rib cage above where the liver would have been has bite marks that appear to be human. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. Scully brings a photograph of a face of the missing person from 1933 and a skeleton found to show they are a match. It won't help the case, though. Mulder hasn't slept in three days, and Scully offers to watch the residents of Tombs so he can get some sleep. Mulder agrees, but unbeknownst to him, Tombs has stowed away in his trunk. While watching horror movies, Mulder starts to fall asleep. Tombs has been creeping through his heating ducts and is now unscrewing the vent. Once inside, he fakes an incident leaving evidence that can frame Mulder for assault. The next morning, Toombs is in the hospital, badly beaten. He even has a shoe imprint for Mulder's sneakers on his face. When the doctor asks who did this to him, he implicates Mulder. The police arrive at Mulder's house and bring him in. Mulder is sitting in the hot seat as his new boss, Skinner, smugly reprimands him. He says a forensic analysis of Toombs' injury would show his foot wasn't in it. Skinner states his unauthorized surveillance on this victim is grounds for a disciplinary action. Scully admits that she was on that, too. After she leaves, Skinner compliments Mulder on being an excellent agent, but feels his talents are being wasted on the X-Files. He is forbidden to go near tombs, and Skinner adds, This is close. Any closer, and a thousand friends in the Capitol won't be able to help you they are able to match the dental x-rays of tombs to the indentations in the bones found at the chemical plant. It's not conclusive, but enough to get a warrant and bring him in. Dr. Monty pays tombs a visit as his caretakers go out for the night. He is making a new nest out of paper. The psychologist asks if he's doing an art project. Oh yeah, just for you. Tombs gets up to shut the door and Monty then becomes his fifth and last victim. Mulder and Scully go over to his residence and find what's left of Dr. Monty. I guess they're not going to find the full Monty. They surmise that Toombs must be going away to his hidey hole to hibernate. However, the house was torn down and they are building a mall at that location. The two go to investigate where they stumbled upon Toombs' meat cave a year earlier. 
It is located under the escalator, so Mulder volunteers to crawl through the narrow passageway to stop him. He finds the bile duct where Toombs is settled in for his long nap. Toombs grabs him, pulling him deeper into the cavity. Mulder smacks him with the flashlight and is able to wriggle away with Toombs closely slithering behind. Scully reaches for his arm to try to pull him up, but he gets dragged back. Finally, he is up and out of there with Toombs right at his heels. Mulder switches on the escalator, which turns Toombs into spaghetti. Well, that, um, <clears throat> escalated quickly. So finally, after 90 years, the case is closed. Skinner asks the cigarette man if he believes what is written in the X-File report on Tombs. He replies, of course I do. Mulder says, things are changing for the X-Files. They've just been validated and given the green light to continue revealing the strangest of truths. So what are your thoughts on this 90-year-old slithering case? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on the next video or the playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.